You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here with none other than Ryan Van Puderoin, who's legendary in terms of knowing his stuff around the drum kit, but he's also just a well-rounded, motivational, and inspirational guy. Ryan, thanks for entering The Peach Pit. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. And uh, incredible job, Derek, at uh, pronouncing my last name because most people butcher it. <laughs> <laughs> I I try a little bit harder because I... I... I pronounced Haken Hawken for a long time, and I finally got called on it. So now I try a little harder. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff to pronounce in metal that's pretty t- tough to pronounce. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what have you been listening to lately? Um, you know what? I've been on a big uh, carnival kick. I, I love that band. I'm friends with those guys, too. They're an Australian band, but I've been listening to them for years and years. But uh I don't know. Something just prompted me recently. I, I started listening to their first record, Thamata, and uh, I was just like, oh, this is such a great record. And so I just started uh, cranking them up quite a bit. So, yeah, I've been listening to a lot of that. Um, I'm a huge Beatles fan. That's my favorite band ever. So I listen to them all the time. Uh, what else have I been listening to? Been getting into, I, I enjoying the new Slipknot record. I thought that was well done. Um, you know, I, I kind of listen to a little bit of everything. Once summer comes, I, I start listening to a lot of Bob Marley. I love reggae as well. So kind of all yeah. over the map, man. It depends, uh, depends on the mood. And, uh, I'm always a happy, positive guy, but, uh, you know, it's like, uh, I like lots of various music. I'm sure we could talk all day about different bands and stuff, but we'd need to get to a monolith. So, uh, it was really exciting to see that you had started this project. Uh, can you give me a bit of an idea of the origin story behind a monolith? Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is how it went. It is Brian Waddell, Beave, that's his nickname. Uh, we played in Devon Townsend Project. Brian was the bass player in, with Devon, and I was obviously the drummer. Uh, and we played in Devon Townsend Band, Devon Townsend Project for over 15 years. Um, but you know, Devin has a history of starting something and then breaking it up. He did it with Strap Young Lad. He did it with Devin Townsend Band. And then Devin Townsend Project was by far the longest serving thing he ever did for 10 years. And we were in that. But, you know, coming around 2015, we were getting the feeling that, okay, just, just little things Devin would say, little hints would be dropped that eventually this is going to stop pretty soon. So, Brian and I were talking to each other one day and I said, Hey, let's, let's start writing music. We have the same, um, influences, you know, we like the same music. Let's just see where it goes. So we started writing music, you know, just in case, uh, Devin were to pull the plug on Devin Townsend project and anytime soon. And, uh, you know, fast forward to 2018, January, Devin pulls the plug on Devin Townsend project. Uh, at that point, Beeve and I, we had written, you know, I think we had like 12, 13 songs at that point. And uh, so we didn't waste any time. Devin called us. I remember this too. It's like he, he called us all on the same day, all the members, and said, I'm breaking up the band. And Beeve and I weren't surprised. We're like, yeah, sure. You know, he, I think even Devin was kind of shocked with the way we took it, right? Because I don't know, we were expecting it, you know, and literally, Beav and I called each other that exact same day and we're like, hey, let's do it. And, uh, you know, we started showing the music to different musicians that we would love to have in the band. The only one that was different was John Howard. That was um, suggested to us through a mutual friend in the music industry. And, uh, you know, so we got in touch with John through a friend and uh, sent him our music. John loved the music, said, hey, can you demo some of this stuff for us? And He literally sent us a demo back the next day and we're like, okay, this is an anomaly, man. A singer sending you demos the very next day. Usually you're waiting a month for them to get anything done, right? So he sent them back and we were absolutely floored. So John was our guy. We looked at a a few other people too, but John just had the full package. He could do anything with his voice and that's what we wanted because, you know, we wanted a guy who could sing, wanted a guy who could scream and could do other things all in one song and that's what john did and then uh you know for a second guitar player kai hoopin and i've known him for years amazing guitar player really quirky really different loves doing you know pretty unique sounding stuff and we wanted that his brian's got kind of his meat and potatoes killer riffs cool ideas 
but uh you know kai brings something totally different so when we approached him here the music he loved it that was done uh and then scott whalen our bass player was the last guy to to be in the band and it was the same thing he played with the conaline crush for years a canadian band for like five years and toured with them and all that uh lots of experience but just a sick bass player man like the guy can play anything from primus or rush and He's got a crazy voice too, which is great to to back up John because John needs harmonies. He'll need places where other guys need to scream while he does another part. So Scott filled in all the gaps and uh, that rounded out our band. That's how we came together. You know, it's like the music generally is, it was written by uh, Beave and I, but John came in and, and he contributed to a couple songs and uh help helped out with some of the lyrics too but that's that's the origin of the band right there so you and beef have obviously known each other for a long time now and you've probably got a pretty good friendship going and and starting this uh project off together was there kind of a shared vision that you guys kind of had in mind yeah you know it's like we wanted it to be a metal band but the vision for us was sure it's going to be primarily metal but we don't want to be tied down to that our goal was not to create a new genre or to, to okay, we got to do something different than everyone else because that's what everyone's trying to do. And, and to be honest, I just think there's a lot of shit out there, man. I really do. I think it's oversaturated and so many bands are just trying to be so weird and different and we need to start this new genre. Our vision, write the best possible songs we can. That's it. That was our vision. It's like, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel of metal here. We're not trying to to do something in different. It's like, I think bands should focus on writing their best songs. And you know what? You're going to evolve. And who knows, you may start a new genre with that. But the bottom line is just write the best song you can. That's all we wanted to do. We've toured for 15 years, man, and recorded a bunch of albums with, you know, a modern day Frank Zappa and Devin Towns. And it's like, a, we got our fill with quirky, weird, progressive music. You know, we just want to get into writing songs that we think, we not not even that other people love, writing songs that we would love to listen to. That was our vision. And that's what we did with State of Being, is we just wrote an album of what we thought were 10 great songs. And our producer helped choose them for us. And uh, that's how it came. But that's definitely our vision for now and moving forward. It's just... Write the best music we can that are great songs that we think, you know, obviously we're going to love and other people would like. I'm really glad that you brought that up, that somebody said there is a lot of shit out there. It seems to be like it's a cliche and a lot of bands are kind of gimmicky. Yeah. And I was kind of worried, you know, hearing about all the members join us like, oh, this is going to be like a super group. But listening to the music, it sounds like it just comes from the heart. And uh you guys really took your time to polish this. I mean, for a debut album, a debut release from a band, this is like really polished. You guys really took your time to just make what you wanted here. Was that like something that you knew from the beginning that's what you wanted to do was take your time? Yes, we, we definitely did. Uh, there was somewhat of an evolution because as soon as you bring other members into the band and, and you start working with different people, uh, you decide whether you're going to, go on your own, uh, like go on your own, or if you're going to sign with the label, there is a lot of decisions to be made. And, and, you know, at the start, we were kind of rushing things a, a little too fast, I think. And we learned from that. Right. And so then we were just like, let's take our time. Let's send all of our music to the producer. Let's, let's get this right. You, you have all your life. They say you have all your life to do your first record, you know, to, to write and create your first record. And, uh, you know, we, we did it over three years of writing with Beave and I and then a couple other songs with John. But, you know, when it came to the process of recording and getting the mix right, how we're going to release it, just everything, we took our time. And, you know, some of the people, you know, fans, I don't like call them fans, I call them supporters. But, you know, the, the people who supported us, you know, they're getting a little frustrated because we released Hollow, our first single ever in 2019, in January 2019. And then, you know, a year later, we come out with the album, you know, and they're like, come on already, you know, but it's like, hey, listen, we want to give you what we feel is our best. So we're going to take the time to do that. And we hope you guys enjoy it as a result. Right. And and so far, 
it's been incredible. We've gotten so many awesome reviews. Uh, all of our supporters are loving it. And, uh, you know, streaming is going good. Unfortunately, you know, COVID-19 has just messed with everything. You know, I'm not going to lie. It's hurt our sales. It's hurt streaming. It's hurt everything, just like it's hurt every other band in the world. You know, uh, we had to cancel our first headlining tour of Europe and the UK, which was going to be a really successful run. And uh, that's gone, you know, and now we're rescheduling it and just trying to find out when we can do it. And there's just so many question marks, right? But you know, getting back to the original question, yeah, we took our time with it and the results have been awesome, you know, with the exception of COVID-19 messing with it. <laughs> <laughs> and going into the studio this time around, you were working with your brother, Jason Van Puderoin, uh, recording the tape. I mean, uh, what was that all like? Yeah. Okay. So to get into that, first of all, uh, Jay, my brother. Uh, you know, he didn't get in just because he was my brother. It's like he's he's a producer, mixer, engineer, and he's worked with bands like Nickelback. Uh, he's producing the brand new Simple Plan record. He's worked with Chris Cornell, Airborne, Chris Daughtry, you name it, just A-list people, right? And uh, super talented and can get monstrous sounds. He's always wanted to do a metal album because he never has done a full-out metal album. And is this his first time working with you creatively? Oh, no. creatively? No, no, no. Nope. We, we've done sessions upon sessions upon sessions. I've recorded with him too many times to count, but uh, a lot of it was session work. He did record the drums for a Devin Townsend record, uh, or two of them, uh, Sky Blue and uh, Dark Matters. But, you know, in the end, uh, you didn't really get to hear his his drum sound because Devin, Devin likes samples and stuff. And he just threw a bunch of samples on the drums. Right. But, um, you know, this was a good chance for, for Jay to work with us. And this, that kind of leads into the whole two inch tape story. And the one thing that I said to Jay is just, you're so good at getting awesome drum sounds without samples. You know, I have this beautiful sonar SQ2 kit, a custom made kit. Why would I throw samples all over that when these, yeah, why would you, oh, beautiful. <laughs> You know, and that's yeah. always been my goal. But and to defend Devin Townsend, he likes that process digital high tech sound, right? So there's keyboards everywhere, there's crap loads of effects, there's samples, there's all over the drums, you know, like that's his sound. So in defense yeah. for him, that's what he wanted, right? But for yeah. us, I said to Jay, we want to go meat and potatoes, we want to go old school. Let's record the drums. It was actually his idea. He said, well, if you want to go old school, let's record the drums to two inch tape. It'll be fatter. It'll be warmer. It's just, it's different. It's smoother sounding, but you know, you need an engineer that knows what they're doing in order to make it sound big and compete with what's out there today. Right. So I was like, let's do it. So here's the thing with this album, all the drums, what you hear is my exact drum kit, zero samples, nothing. It's to two inch tape, all microphones. All the guitars, no DIs. Those are pure cabinets and the uh, and the heads, the amps that you hear. Same with the bass. John's vocals, no auto tuning, zero. Jason yes. is forever just getting John to on multiple takes. He just drilled them to get the best vocal performance he could out of them. Right. So everything on this album is one hundred percent real and. I'm not knocking samples by any means. I'm not yeah. a fan myself, to be honest. I'm not. I always fought for that with DTP. You know, it's like I wanted, you know, let's just do one album with just real drums, you know. And But, you know, nothing against them, right? Who knows the second album the Monolith releases might have samples on it. I don't know, you know. But um, this is just the direction that we wanted to go. Like, you know, it's it's like the analogy would be our approach to the vision with uh, writing good songs. You know, it's like, sure, we want to write good songs in the studio. We want it to, to be real. We want it to be, this is what a monolith would actually sound like. You know, there's no DI, yeah. there's no nothing. That's my drum sound. That's Beeb's guitar sound. That's Scott's bass sound. That's Kai's guitar sound. And that's what John sounds like for real with vocals, no auto-tune. You know, this is a monolith raw. and But it sounds awesome. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> you have this incredible producer, mixer, engineer, who has the talent to make you sound as big as anything out there with samples. 
And it's exactly what he did. That's my personal opinion, but I stack it up against other records and it easily hangs with the top bands out there, man. You know, so um, that's that's how we uh, did everything. You know, it's like, it's really cool. I love the fact that this album is organic. You know, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, and you can you get the idea that this is if you guys went to see them live, if somebody saw you guys live, this is what it would sound like. You know what I mean? It, the the music hits you in a way that it doesn't feel like, like you said, like it's all auto tuned or something like that, right? Yeah, that's exactly it. That's why we did it that way. You're so motivational and inspirational. So I just personally, I need to thank you for that. Not enough people are doing that, and a lot of people who do try to do that eventually become gurus. And you're not doing that. You're just always posting like motivational quotes and stuff like that. So I just wanted to throw something at you and see what you would say. Mm -hmm. What would you say to somebody that came to you and said, Ryan, I don't feel like getting my hopes up anymore. Well, the first thing I I'd tell them is they're making a mistake. You know, um, here's the thing. There's, there's a series of principles that I believe in because my life has turned out the way it has because of these principles and they're applicable to anyone. Um, I'm going to tell you these principles right now, and this will answer the question that you just asked. And this is what I would say to anyone who's given up hope. Okay. Here's the nine principles. All these listeners should write this down and you should follow this shit, man. This is so important. Um, principle number one, believe in yourself. Principle number two, Dream big. Principle number three, set goals. Principle number four, visualize. Principle number five, which is the most important one out of all nine, is take action. Work hard. Principle number six is gratitude. Be grateful. Principle number seven is health. Principle number eight is never, ever quit. You have to persevere in life. And Principle number nine is enjoy the journey. Enjoy every single day. Those nine principles I would explain to this person. And I'd say, if you're giving up hope, you're giving up on yourself. Because you know what? You've succeeded before. Everyone has done something in their life where they have done something and achieved something that blew their mind. They're just like, I can't believe it. I got it. This, this happened, you know, whether it was a test, whether it's graduating, whether it doesn't matter what it is, but you've done it before. You know what I mean? So don't worry about your failures. If you're failing and you're giving up hope, the worst thing you can do is walk away from that failure. If you walk away from that, that is one of the dumbest things anyone can do in their life. Want to know why? Because there is gold in failure. Failure is your greatest teacher. You know what I mean? It's like as soon as you fail, there's something you can learn from it. And that's the gold nugget. And that's the biggest mistake that people make. That's what leads people to giving up on hope and, and going, oh, my God, you know, my life sucks. It's just never going to do this. It's all up to you. OK, and there's something called and it isn't a principle. Lots of people say this should be a principle in my nine steps, but it's so obvious to me that it shouldn't be a principle. It should be a given. And that's called 100% responsibility. All the decisions that you make today decide your tomorrow. And I don't care what anyone says. Where you are in your life, every listener is listening to this, you're where you are right now because of the decisions you made. And if you can't accept that, then uh, chances are life's not going to go your way. As soon as you can take responsibility for your life and everything that you've decided on to get you to the point you are, you're going to see better results. Because if you made some bad decisions, there's something to learn from those bad decisions so you won't make that decision again. Okay, so anyone who's lost hope has to look at themselves and they have to look at themselves realistically. They have to look at their life. Where did they mess up? How could they make things better? If they succeeded, why did they succeed? That's another thing. People succeed. They go, woohoo, I, I succeeded. Now I'm going to move on. That's just as dumb. If you succeeded, why did you succeed? That's how I came up with these nine principles is I looked at it and I went, okay, these are, these are the nine things. I looked at my life and all the achievements. I was like, how did I get here? I came up with these nine things. 
I didn't know if it was going to be three things, 13 things, nine things. It didn't matter. It was these things that spoke to me. And it took me a year, two years to come up with these principles, just dissecting my life and all my failures and all my successes. And I'm like, these nine principles I consistently did day after day after day throughout my life. And I've achieved my wildest dreams. I've been a feature in Modern Drummer. I got massive companies endorsing me and giving me free gear. You know, it's like I've gotten the record deal. I've played Red Rocks. I've headlined Royal Albert Hall, a sold out Royal Albert Hall. I played in front of 100,000 people on the Metallica Black stage when they had the 25 year anniversary for it. Like, dude, the list goes on and on and on. And they're all mind blowing achievements. But why? I kept pushing forward. I kept believing in myself. And the top three things out of all nine principles that you guys need to remember, believe in yourself, take action, never quit. Those will always be the most important things. Add 100% responsibility, which is just a given. Instantly, you're giving yourself a shot at living the best life you can. You know, So that's what I would say to someone who says, I'm losing hope. If you're losing hope, you're giving up on yourself. End of story. That was so well put. Thank you so much. Uh, I know we got to wrap this up. So is there anything else you wanted to let our listeners know? You know what? Thank you so much for the support, for the people who are supporting uh, a monolith. Derek, thank you, man, for, for reaching yeah, out. Of course. Uh, it doesn't matter where the interview is coming from. If it's a radio station, magazine, if it's a blog, all of it is a massive help because we're, we're a brand new band. So, you know, thank you very much. Thank you to all the people supporting us. I definitely want to say, you know, if you want to support a monolith, especially during COVID-19, um, shameless plug here, but go to www.amonolithband.com. You can buy our brand new album in vinyl. It's being released uh, at the end of June. You can get signed copies, unsigned copies. You can also get our CD, which is available now. Uh, we have a ton of really cool merch there, whole bunch of stuff. And, you know, that helps greatly because, uh, unfortunately we can't tour, which has hurt us a lot. Uh, our album came out when COVID-19 was blowing up, you know, it's, it's been, it's been a bit of a tough go, but we don't give up, man. You know, we keep going. So, uh, and the reason we keep going are for all those people who support us and have been uh, very cool with us. So thank you very much to all those people, including yourself, Derek. And uh, like I said, if, if you want to support us or, or help us out so we can get out there when touring is allowed to, to happen and for us to, to get out there, the best way to do it at this point is just, you know, subscribing to our YouTube, liking all of our pages, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and most of all, going to www.monolithband.com. You can buy merch, the new album on vinyl and CD. That helps us out immensely, all those things. So thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to me. You too, Derek, and uh, great talking to you, man. Thanks for the interview. You bet. Thank you. See ya. Bye-bye.